Hello and welcome back folks, Heir of the Great Maw here, and today we are going to talk about Iron Blasters. Now I have read just in comments and seen in passing on like Twitter and other commentary in like the Total War, um, uh, the Total War Discord about Iron Blasters, some people saying they're OP, uh, some people just saying they're very good. So I wanted to take a look at them today, see how they perform. Before we jump into a battle and test them out in a few scenarios, and again, the testing here is going to be somewhat idealized, and we're going to discuss probably a more campaign-centric thing, but I'll touch multiplayer as best I can. I'm really not, uh, I'm really not a professional at multiplayer right now, but I'll give you what opinion I can. Um, so the Iron Blaster is 1,400 gold. It is an artillery piece that's kind of combined with like a single entity monster. Um, I don't know that it counts as both, but that's what it effectively is. It's a single entity. It counts as a large entity. It's got 90 armor, which is pretty darn solid. Speed at 66 is very fast for artillery. Um, it has really good weapon strength at 120 with uh, dedicated AP and anti-infantry. However, this thing really lacks much attack. Um, so even though its damage is good, it's rarely going to land hits on anything except for very cheap infantry. So if I were you, I would only consider that melee or weapon strength very good against only the cheapest of infantry. Um, now that said, it has a pretty darn solid charge bonus at 48, which is quite good. It's very likely to hit stuff off of the charge. So if it's something that you're cycle charging and bringing in, which you potentially can against infantry at 66, then it could be quite good because that charge bonus would certainly help you land hits. Now ammunition is 20, which is certainly not bad. The range is 380 and the missile strength is a whopping 1.1k. And that is armor piercing plus, I believe, armor, armor sundering. Um, so this is going to make anything that doesn't do as much AP damage do even more damage, um, even in melee. So this makes the Iron Blaster very interesting. It says specifically here that it gets collision attacks, it's anti-infantry, um, and I imagine it's going to be pretty good in those respects. Now, I've set up a few replays. I think first and foremost, I'm going to test it against Corn. Corn has a couple of things that I want to test against. One, a very expensive large single entity, Scarbrand. And number two, um, tightly packed high armor infantry, like Chaos Warriors. So I'm going to start off there, and we're going to test it against both of those and see how it performs. My expectation is that it does best against the tightly packed high armor infantry. Let's go take a look. All right, so the battle started. I set up the enemy to be coming in from maximum range. Uh, so it's giving me better chances there. You can see that shot did hit Scarbrand. Uh, one was targeted at Scarbrand, the other was targeted at the Warriors of Chaos. You can see my targeting there. And the shot, even from maximum range, did really nice damage. That was um, that was 11 kills on the very first volley from max range. You see it's a spread shot, and so it does do very well against tightly packed infantry. It is causing tremendous damage to the Chaos Warriors. Less so to Scarbrand. And then when Scarbrand gets in a fight, it's harder for this thing to shoot him. Um, so, I don't know how it's going to be, but I mean, it wasn't bad. It did some good damage. Now the Tyrant is doing some damage of his own. So it's going to be hard to tell exactly what the cannon did. But we'll keep an eye on it because we know which cannon was firing at Scarbrand versus which one is firing at the infantry. Because the one firing at the infantry is going to have more kills. This is over with. And you can see that it is very effective. So the more expensive, the more tightly packed the infantry is the better the Iron Blaster is going to do, especially when it can hit it from maximum range, which was 380. Um, it seems to be able to fire uh, at a decent arc. There was a little bit of terrain in this map, so I did have it in good positioning on the back. Um, and it, it's just absolutely clobbering this unit. By the time that unit even closed the distance to your army, it'd be ineffective, or you could have done tons of damage to multiple units. Now, one thing I did notice with the Iron Blasters is it was a little bit weird when I would give it an attack order, like a ranged attack order. Sometimes it just wouldn't fire. It would move around, do weird things. Um, it had a really hard time sometimes attacking after I'd given an order. Here it did, but in other fights I used, it was kind of glitchy. So this might be something that is going to require a little bit of micromanagement. Now, here I put it into melee just to get a feel, and sure enough, on the charge, it was brutal coming through that unit. Now, I wouldn't want it to just stick around in melee with a very low 20 melee defense and 26 attack, but that 48 charge bonus this seems going to be pretty good into uh, low to mid-tier infantry um, as long as it keeps moving. And again, 66 speed, pretty solid, much faster than the infantry. So an interesting performance from our two iron blasters. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and fast forward here. I just kind of tinker around to the end to see whether or not I'm capable of killing Scarbrand. And that shot right there was gruesome. 
They actually did kill Scarbrand. Um, so let's take a look at the damage value they were able to rack up there. Uh, the one with less kills is the one that fired mostly at Scarbrand. It's it pretty good. Like it, it got 1,300 gold value, and it and that was in a situation where it started shooting at him at max range, and he just let him charge right in. You know, like to start to fight the tyrant and others. So that is really not bad um, against a uh, a single entity target. Now the other one's going to have way less gold value, but if you look at the damage dealt, it was even more damage and it had more kills and this is the one that was firing at the infantry so the iron blaster is going to be extremely effective against tightly packed high armor and even better against high value infantry so let's name a few here zargard um chaos warriors uh let's see other things that are tightly packed um kassars uh ice guard all of those things are going to be targets that the iron blaster is going to excel at Help you get your value. You're going to be very good against Cathay. Almost everything from Cathay is tightly packed infantry. So Celestial Dragon, or Celestial Warrior, Celestial Dragon, Albers, I don't know, whatever they are. <laughs> the Elite Halberds and the Elite Crossbowmen. I forget their names at the moment. I don't know why it blanked out on me. I always say Dragon Warrior there too, which is not as Celestial Dragon Crossbowmen, and then there's Celestial Dragon, um... Maybe warriors. I don't know. I don't. Whatever it is. Anyway, they um, those units are going to be particularly uh, vulnerable to this cannon because of their tightly packed formation and their high uh, high expense. So I think those are going to be targets that are going to be really good for this cannon. However, I want to see how it functions against monstrous infantry. So I set up a test of that. Let's go take a look. This is going to be the monstrous infantry test. This would also apply to monstrous cavalry, I'm sure, because they're going to be roughly the same size. I'm using Minotaur's Corn here, which is a mid-tier armor, but still pretty typical monstrous infantry unit. And that first shot was brutal. It took a lot of hit points off. It did not kill any unit models. It did cause massive hit point damage. Um, so we'll see what happens here in the second volley. I'm actually focus firing from one group, and it was brutal. Saw what it did to those Minotaurs again. They only lost one unit model here. So I don't know how frequently you're going to actually be picking off models with the early volleys. But again, very, very effective. That was over 50% of the unit health. I clicked the order on this other one, but they fired at the other one. This is what I go back to. There's some weird firing commands here. But look at that. They routed those Minotaurs with three volleys. Now watch this. Whenever they pile up into the Tyrant, I have a really difficult time shooting see every now and then it gets a shot when it does hit it's brutal um, but then sometimes I, it's probably because my ogre tyrant is so big this probably helps whenever your target isn't quite so big um, but I mean when these guys land hits it's a significant hit so uh, against the the monstrous infantry they're gonna be just fine uh, so I think there's gonna be one other interesting test here which would be high armor cavalry especially tightly packed stuff so I'm thinking like Griffin Legion so let's check that one out real quick and here we go. I got our Griffin Legion. These are heavily armored, very expensive elite cavalry. Um, so this will be an interesting test for the Iron Blaster. They're tightly packed, and I think this will be similar to infantry. Oh my gosh, it was almost even better than infantry. Look at that, how many unit models it killed in one blow there. That was brutal. 12 unit models killed in the volley. Now this is combined fire at the moment. Um, but, I mean, it's not unusual for someone to have two of these, but, oh my gosh, that is just oh devastating to the cavalry. This may be their best use. I mean, that was utterly gruesome. Let's see if they can get one more shot off. If they can, that is impressive to get almost three volleys. Yeah, they got three volleys, and once again, they ignored my fire order. You can see the fire order, and they just flat ignored it. I don't know if this is like a Warhammer 3 wide issue, but um, I've had it happen with this unit a lot. I've actually had it happen with others. They did not get a fourth shot there. Um, but I mean, that was impressive damage into the Griffin Legion. Very impressive damage. Um, so I would say that this is possibly the best use for the Iron Blasters, especially if you're playing against Vax that's going to wield a lot of cavalry. So right now, Kislev, for instance, they feel a decent amount of that type of cavalry, so the Iron Blaster would be good both against their archers, their infantry, and their cavalry. And, I mean, honestly, the Iron Blasters are going to be a good way to try and pull Kislev closer to you, where you don't just have to walk into the waiting arms of all their Kassars and their um, Ice Guard, Streltsy, and other stuff like that. 
So I think the Iron Blaster would be particularly good uh, when fighting against Kislev. But let's go ahead and exit out, take a look at the stats one more time, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a wider perspective. Just quickly here on the way out, just, uh, I mean, look at that. That one got 614 gold value on just a couple of shots there. Um, but between the two of them, they had over 1,000 gold value um, in just the very short time that battle was joined there. So it wouldn't take long for these to start paying off. They are 1,400 each. Um, but I mean, in a regular battle, you know, the cavalry is not going to be able to just charge in and stop you from shooting. Because again, I was running a somewhat idealized scenario there. But Iron Blaster, I think, is going to be very good in Ogre Campaign. And assuming you can afford them and assuming you can recruit them, I think you should have them. And basically any Ogre army, at least a couple of them, maybe more. Like if I was fighting Kislev, heck, I'd probably want four of them um, or something going into a fight like that. Uh, I would stack up as many as I could because they'd be extremely good against almost all Kislev units from range. Um, so I would think that'd be a good use for it, uh, especially in the campaign. But I think they'd be good against many factions, to be honest. They would be very good against Korn because of having so much tightly packed infantry. Um, now, as far as multiplayer goes, I could see these things being very good in domination game mode, meaning you get one early and you use it to absolutely punish someone who's out in the open. Now, there are certain maps where that'd be a little harder, but if there's like choke point spots or capture points that are out in the open, um, this thing could be absolutely brutal at picking off enemies who have to stand there and try and capture something and just doing tremendous damage from rain. So I could actually see the Iron Blaster being a pretty potent pick in uh, Domination. Now, as far as 1v1, I haven't played enough 1v1 to know, but again, up against the right faction, this thing's going to do some nice damage. Overall, I feel like the Iron Blaster is an excellent unit. In the campaign, it's a why wouldn't you use it type of thing, right? The only reason you wouldn't is if you don't have the money for upkeep or um, the building to recruit it. Otherwise, you should be using the Iron Blaster. Um, like, it feels like one of those units. And again, in multiplayer, more situational, but I would think, generally speaking, pretty darn good in Domination. And um, again, in 1v1, I don't see why it couldn't be feasible when you pick the right scenario where you think it's going to pay off. So are you coming up against a faction with expensive cavalry, expensive infantry, and honestly, this is going to be a really handy unit for the Ogres come Immortal Empire's time. So when all the game one and two factions show up, I, there's going to be a lot more elite infantry and cavalry rolling around out there for these things to shoot at even than there is right now. Um, so overall, Iron Blaster is fantastic. Give this thing a try if you haven't. If you have anything to add about the Iron Blaster, get down in the comments and let me know what you think. Is it OP? Is it good? Is it weak? Tell me what you think about the Iron Blaster. Eric Carthage signing out for now. I will see you soon with some more content.